the recording. Any any questions you guys have? Any things that are coming up? Well, I must have been doing a really good job, if not, huh? Let's see here. Are you guys, uh, what's going on? Are you guys all good with the pathology project? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay. Um, I still have, I wasn't able to see certain things this morning, so I'm still checking that out. So if I haven't graded that yet, um, um, I'll, I'll hopefully do it soon. What about the, um, the discussion? You guys know what to do with that? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what I, um, even though you guys probably all posted the video, uh, but some of you haven't, or a bunch of you haven't, which I know it's a big project and it can be somewhat anxiety provoking. That's why I want to hold your hands as much as possible. But I also, at the same time, still want you guys to, you know, do presentation and learn about it. And, and because it's part of life and the more we practice, the easier it gets. So, but if you have not uh, been able to do that, or as it's been with the online class, just sometimes quite challenging for some of you to connect with other group members. And I'm, I'm very sorry about that. When the, but in the fall, we're hopefully somewhat back in the classroom. So that maybe is going to be a little easier. Um, but if you haven't been able to post the video, I still want you to engage in the discussion. And the way you enter the discussion, in case you have not been able to, um, to, to, to post your own video, you just say as a first line, uh, I don't have a video yet uh, and I'm working on it or we are working on it. And then you can, and at that point you can get a, a, a fee, you know, you can enter the discussion form and you can look at some other people's videos and then um, feed back to them. And that way, even if you do not have your own video created yet you can get those points because uh, part of the project is to you guys to learn how to you know well, i'm assuming you already know but i i've i've worked on these slides for so many years now that i i feel i got a, a few pointers along the way that i want to pass on to you as much as possible um and then the second part of course of it is also it's interesting stuff i mean it's somewhat important stuff to learn about these things. I have had extremely interesting uh, projects this semester and you guys have been phenomenal well. I'm thinking um, I've learned tons. I didn't, for example, know about postpartum depression the level I know now, which is wonderful. Um, um, and also I really urge you guys to, to listen, to, to, to look into the HIV chronic pain parts, uh, especially uh, because those are also very deep that just come to mind I'm chronic pain because I'm dealing with that on a daily basis with people um, but you know please engage and then give people some feedback look at it from a perspective of what do I learn from it and so thank you for those points which is great um, yeah thanks William you guys have been phenomenal in your presentation I really love it um, and uh, the second part of, of, the, of the discussion is also to be a little bit critical and think about where, give, give the, the group a one pointer or two pointers that you feel like you, uh, as a first impression. Because the other thing is often, you know, we don't necessarily have the same viewpoint if we watch our own. Very often when I watch my voice, I'm going like, oh my God, I'm so horribly sounding. <laughs> and so then uh, I, I might not even catch some of the other things that would make it better and easier. So those are really the two main points that I would like from the discussion uh, situation. Any questions or comments on that? No, that means oh, we're good. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, I just got on. I don't know if I missed it. I'm sorry, Professor. This is my view. Um, I see that discussion on the my to do list. I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but uh, this is all week 15 pathology project. Learn from each other the discussion. I know I did one. I posted it with a video, and you're supposed to comment on two of the um your classmates. Is that the same thing? Uh, the same one, or is that a duplicate? I wasn't sure. Oh, yeah. You know what? Last week, you still see both of them. You should. Yeah, see. I still, I, 
still see it again for this week. I know last week mentioned you mentioned it when I was actually recording, but um yeah, it's still it's still showing me on my um to do um twice this week too. Oh no no okay okay. What I had to do see that's I don't see that portion. What I had to do, I I did it the wrong way the first time. Uh huh. Instead of making a discussion thing, you know, there's these templates that you use and want some more assignments. And then you can say, how do you want to upload it? And then the discussion is a different template. And I, I created the wrong template. And I realized that after the call last week. So I had to redo that. Okay. So the, hmm, so, the, but if you click on the to-do list on, on one of them, it shouldn't be active anymore because I deleted it. Um, it's weird because I did click on it. It says submit assignment still. That's why it was showing me the same thing. Um, that, okay, I then did, all, uh, yeah. Then all, and if you click further, if you, you say submit, I'm not sure you can submit it anymore because I can't take it anymore because I deleted oh, well, it. That's weird because I, I, I attached my video uh -huh. on my group into it. I was able to almost submit a album. I'm like, wait, this is the, is this a duplicate? But it says, oh. But um, I was just making sure. So as long as that. No, no, I'm glad you bring it up because it out. it's kind of almost like a little fluke in the background, or probably I might have done a wrong pathway because it was published already, and then later I realized I made a mistake. Um, you know, um, please, all of you guys, do the the other one. Probably doesn't say submit assignment. It probably says in a start a discussion, right? Um, I think the first one did, right? The first one did, but the okay, second the one, one was the old one, yeah. Yeah, we wanna we wanna do the one that says discussion. Don't not worry about the other one. All right. Just do the okay, one that says you. discussion. And if you have trouble with that, or if any of you guys listening have trouble with that, shoot me a pronto and I'll try, we'll try to figure it out. But do, if it's two to-dos show up under week 15 pathology project, learn from each other, only do the discussion. Okay? Okay, thank you. I know, I'm sorry. That's, I gotta go in the background of that a little bit deeper, but hopefully, because this, this semester, I sort of created the whole thing. Hopefully that stuff is unfortunately only caught you a little bit. All right. Any other questions to this whole thing? Oof, it's a little bit more complicated than I hope it will be. Can you say again where what are you expecting on our um, discussion from the videos? Yeah, I I would like. Let me actually share it. Hold on. Let me go into it. Um, let me share my screen. Here we go. You see my screen, right? Yes. The rubric. So I want you to upload your research project if you have it. If you don't, you just say in that line, you say, don't have it one done yet. And then you post that because that way it gets you into the discussion forum because you can see other people's posts before you post. Otherwise, it cannot be difficult to do some of those things. Um, and so you want to post your thing. If you have it, if not, just say that blurb, you know, write a little blurb about it. Say like, hey, I, we made a video about blah, blah, blah. And it's really great stuff. And you want to learn from that. Sell your video, so to speak. Be a little markety. Be a little pompous on it. And then you're going to watch two. If you want more, that's fine. And you give feedback to those two. Some thought-provoking feedback. What did I say here? I think I spelled it out a little bit more in the direction Read some of the description, interest you, and then while you watch, learn from them, and then you reply. And what I want you to reply about, this is the one. What are the main points I learned from it? Tell them something that you learned from watching it. And then what do you like about the presentation? Hey, that was really great, the way you put the pictures and the text together, or the flow was easy. You know, some of those are things like, hey, that was an easy to follow thing, or Oh, I really had to drag myself through this process. And so do a little of that. And then, but, you know, focus on the, what you like first. This is sort of the sandwich away approach also of giving, giving constructive criticism that it actually goes in. And it's not just like, hey, you did horrible that kind of thing. 
but it's like you, you want to first, you know, say what you like, and then you give one or two tips of how the presentation could be made better. Maybe the voice was a little shallow or low or so, you know, even stuff like that. Um, uh, and, and what happens is when you give praises, you praise the person who did it. That's what I've learned in reviewing courses. And actually, that's what I've learned to, to how to treat professors so they don't get defensive, which is kind of funny too. Um, but you first give a praise to the person and then you critique. If you do a critique, you critique the product, not the person. Because that's really what you're doing. It's like, hey, to, to make this product a little bit better, do this or that. And then hopefully that gives um, um, us some feedback for doing it next time again. But also, of course, as I told you before, I'm extremely impressed with the products I've seen. I've not seen for such a broad spectrum so many really good uh, videos and presentations in the classes before done it. Maybe one or two, but not so many of you guys. So that's really, really fantastic. I'm extremely proud of you for that. And so that's about it. And hey, if the presentation is great, just be all positive about it, but be critical too a little bit, because also it's, it's interesting for us to learn how to give critique without being offensive. Um, so the other person will not be defensive. Is that clear? yeah thank Good. you any other questions on that well if not we can go right into the last portion of it so uh i think we're almost there we only have repro and embryo left um and i'm really happy to also have put some embryo in there i think that's a very important part uh what we're learning here in reproduction we go through the different reproductive organs on the male side and then on the female side. And so we talk about that a little bit. Um, and then the last chapter that we're gonna cover is embryology, which I think is very fascinating. It's a bit complicated. I had to work my way around 300 million times on the terminology, which drives me crazy because that little thing changes names every time it, it it's it splits once it's a fertilized egg to a fetus. Um, but go through that, learn as much as you, you can from this situation, uh, from this here. So I think it's a very fascinating chapter. We'll go to implantation, fertilization, it talks about the placenta a little. And then it talks about the embryonic development, how from we get from a two-seller to a multi-seller organism and then how it embeds into the body and then how we get these different layers we get three main layers and endoderm and ectoderm and mesoderm and then how they become different parts in our body how they become the, the, the systems the different systems in our body and so this fascinating stuff we, we're, we're sort of scratching the surface a little bit obviously but we're also at the same time i try to go deep enough that you really have some meaningfulness coming out uh, here's the, how the neural tube gets developed. This is sort of the back, how, how it invaginates, and then how we get uh, the, the spinal cord created and then the brain created afterwards. It's, it's very, very interesting stuff. Um, and so I want you to learn a little bit about that and then the birth, of course, and then the postnatal development. That's just some major points on it. And then we have, of course, a few quizzes on each we have a quiz these quizzes unfortunately don't have videos on them i never get to the repro and embryology in class it's always like the last week gets sort of chopped off because we're falling behind so unfortunately there's no videos about that yet hopefully i'll do that at some point and then we have a labeling and coloring exercise for the reproductive system not from the embryology that's complicated there or it, i'm not really sure what i would uh, have you label a color there of course we have a last little questions i shouldn't say questions and tip at this point it should really be like final thoughts from your side so in here if you could put you know if you go into that and 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 do a, a, a posting if you could help me maybe you know give me some feedback on suggestions and stuff like that on how i can make the class better uh Padlet, final thought. Sorry, I got to write this down. Otherwise, I'm going to forget doing it later. 
All right, and then after that, oh, look at that. We're already having a few put up there. That's great. And then after that, we're finished. So we're done. But um, we have done all of that and you have finished it. And what I also will ask you to do, if you liked my class, go to Rate My Professor and here's a link that should get you there. And um, if you could leave a, a brief review so other students can find the class too, uh, because my goal with this education, really what I try to do is it's a health education class uh, at the end of the day is, is I try to offer it in the whole state eventually. Um, and the more you know, people know about it, the more we can educate people about their body and the more we can make good medical decisions or help other people make, our friends and family make better medical decisions because the medical system is very complex and there's many solutions to problems. But of course, that also makes it twisted and difficult and we have the insurance and all that. And I think in the future, one of the things that will be more and more important is, is, is medical healthcare advocacy for us and each other. And so that's sort of the big gist why I have created this class uh, or originally or through the, through the years. All right, so much for that. So if you could leave me a rate my professor review. And then of course, as you prepare for the test, and I will have a Zoom next Monday, um, um, sort of a Q&A format. If you have thoughts, questions uh, before you take the test, I open the test on at 11 o'clock on Monday after class. And then we're good through, I think it's the 27. So be careful about that because that is a hard date. Once that date hits, the canvas is closed for me too. Uh, and that's Friday. So you do not have that weekend. So make sure you make arrangements for that, please. I give you, let's go into test real fast. Give me the test, give me the test, here's the test. I gave you oh, 60, how is it come showing up like that? Hold on, let me get a student reading. Sorry about that. Oh, it's locked. I can't do that as a student, sorry. Leave the student review. All right, I give you 65 questions. They're true, false, and multiple choice. The first 25 cover the review sheet stuff. I'll show you that again in a minute. Most of you hopefully know it already. And then the other ones cover the anatomy terms. Now, as I said last time, this time you do not write in the name. You simply is a multiple choice. So that should put you at ease a bit on this section, I hope. Um, and also I have changed, I just changed it this morning because you're such a good class. I changed it from two hours to give you three hours. See, it pays off to be a good class that works hard because if you're slackers, I'm like, oh, uh -uh, screw you too. And so this is, this is uh, why it's good to work with us as well. Or have it be a coaching kind of thing, you know, not just like I'm the teacher, you're the student thing. So anyway, you got three hours. That should give you plenty of times. So that's like, I don't know, three minutes a question practically. And that's about it. And if you have a problem, reach out to me. If the computer falls apart, and you could only do whatever, reach out to me. Do not be shy and just let it sit and wait for the best because I got to create, in this situation, I got to help you create that best because I might have to give you another try or something like that. So that's about it for that. And then the, the module you can see at this point on the page is the review and Within the review, I've said it many, many times, the test review, you want it printed out. I know I read the Padlets. Oh, I read the Padlets this morning and gave some feedback on it. Wonk, uh, uh, make sure you go back in and, 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 and read some in case. There was a urinary question about filtration, reabsorption, and secretions. I gave some answer to that um, um, if you had that question. But make sure you, and then of course, most of the other things were about uh, just anxiety starting to kick in, be, a lot of them because the test is coming. So, but if you have this printed out, you have every chapter from the heart to the reproductive system or embryology probably listed what I want you to know 
that could be part of the first 25 questions. And it's not just like, oh, know the ECG tracing. No, no, it's spelled out. What is the P way? What is the QRS complex? So you might have to go back and look what that means. But once you know what that means, you'll be able to answer that question. And you have your flashcard, so to speak, as bullet points on this. This is basically, if I make flashcards like I did for Cairo school the whole time, these are the stuff I would make flashcards of like that. That's what I've learned over the years. And by the way, I learned about flashcards in Switzerland. You have to take like five hours of freak French. I don't like French uh, for seven years. And so you kind of have to learn how to maneuver that stuff around. It was, that's what happens when you're living in a multi multilingual country, I guess. Um, so that's the first part. And then the other part you won't print it out is the anatomy list of the anatomy terms. Let me see. Yeah, there it is. Come up. So that's the other one you won't print it out or have it some, you can also just have all your, no, yeah, you can have also all your homeworks next year if you printed those out because all those terms are there as well. Good. So with that, are there any questions to this part, the test part? It's all organized like that, right, Professor? So if we look for it, it's, it looks just like that? You what? Oh, the, the review sheet, if you go in and type on that, tap on that. Or what? Or the uh, test itself. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is what you're showing us right now, that that's what we should be seeing? Yeah, but if you click, if you click, oh, that's not it. That's not it. If you click on here, you see this? Yeah. Then you get this. So link to that. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. And then you print that out. Okay. And the same is true for this part. The four, this is a four pager. And if it ain't on this list, it ain't on that first 25. Look at that. No reproduction, no embryology. I'm not testing that part because it's too close to the test. So okay. that part of the chapter you you really you know I, I call it marinating the information in your head by taking the quiz or the, the questions okay you know and 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 i think you know i think it's so much information anyway that hope you know hopefully nobody gets offended by that i don't question those uh any other questions to the test no well, if that's the case, I'm going to do a quiz. Are we completely locked out of your class after the 27th? I think so, which kind of drives me crazy a little bit. But I think so. I don't think you have access to it afterwards. So I think suggesting wise, if you feel like you want to um, you know, some stuff is helpful, like in the lecture portion, for example, maybe you screenshot some stuff and make your own document. Okay. Anybody else? Well, if not, let's take the little quiz. Take a sheet of paper out and you see my pictures, right? Yes. So take out a sheet of paper and we're gonna go through a few terms. And um, I know since it's multiple choice, it's so much easier, huh? <laughs> now, number one, tell me or, or write down, what is this lobe called here? This one here, number one, what is this lobe called? Oh, and I need to write it down too, hold on, shoot. What's wrong with me? Number two, I want you to tell me on the brain, I got this front here and then I got this wiggle right here that's reddish. Can you tell me what that reddish wiggle is called?
And then number three, if I open the brain somewhere, I have an open brain. There we go. I would like for you to tell me what is this structure called here, this egg-shaped structure? And then number four, on this brain again, down here by the brainstem, I got this thing here, it's that um, greenish type colored, like, and it's called according to something that's greenish type colored. What is that area here called, number four? And then number five, on the brain here, what is this um, little ball called here, this pink thing? It's actually not really, it's not a brain structure. They just, they put it here because it's so connected to that hypothalamus, which is right here. And it talks to it all the time. It's a gland. What is that gland called? I gave away too much. Now you know it all. Ooh, and let's go a little bit to this model. One question, so we know we've seen it also. This is the ventricular model in the brain. So it's, this is the, where we have these ventricles, the one, two, three, four, and then some connection. I want you to tell me what is one of these large ones called on the, each side? What is one of these large ones called on each side? Number six. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah, you got, I only have this model here. So this is, this is on each side of the brain. It's like a horn, that's sort of a space in the brain that cerebrospinal fluid is filled up with. So this is a mold of the space inside the brain here. See here where it's not quite connecting fully. It's like, why isn't it detaching? That's that space that actually has fluid in it. So that's cerebrospinal fluid. So we got these two ones on each side, each hemisphere of the brain. And then in between, they come together. And then it goes down to the bottom part of the brain stem. And there's the last of those spaces. What I want you to tell me is on the side, what are these big ones on the side called? There's one on each side. And then number seven, also review last week's because we already did some of those things last week. Um, it's on the video. I want you to tell me, where is it? Where is my head? Wait, did I miss it? My eyeball, sorry. What is this big structure called here on the outside of the eyeball? Number seven. And then number eight, bzz, go all the way to the lungs. Uh, I want you to tell me, what is this structure called here that has these rings on? These, these, these are actually cartilage rings, horseshoe shape, open in the back. Go from here to here is a tube. What is that tube called? It's called something else once it splits. So before it splits, what is it called? Couple more. Um, on the gut, you 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 have this small intestine stuff, and you got this big one going around here, and then we poop the stuff out. Uh, what is the first section here called that that is? Um, that I'm pointing to right here. That is the going upward section. And last but not least, give me some kidney. In the kidney, oops, there's the kidney. 
I want you to tell me what is one of those structures referred to as one of those walls. Thing. It's it's here too. This is a big picture of it. Um, but this is where it's smaller, and then th this is in one section. And this is in the whole canyon where these little dots are. What are those things called? That's number ten. And again, on the test, you pick it out of four. Here, right now, you have to name it. That's much, much harder. So if you have a little weirdness of this, these questions, be aware of that. In the classroom, you have to write it down. So this is where you get a benefit from being online. huh? All right, let's solve the problem. Let's shout out the answers. What's number one? Temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. Very good. Number two, a bit more challenging. Anybody? Gryrus. Which one? Precentral. Yeah. Yes, super. Precentral gyrus. So the, the, the terminology is a gyrus is a wiggle, right? Uh, a sulcus is, is a groove, a valley. A fissure is a deep valley that goes all the way down to the wherever next structure. So oh, I this do is, have it here. This is the central sulcus right here. And it's, it's hard to see it on a real brain, which one it is, but it's one that goes all the way across. It's a central sulcus. And then the wiggle before the central sulcus is actually where all the motor commands exit and go to the muscles of the body to tell them what to do. And that's known as the pre-central, pre is before gyrus, pre-central gyrus. And then the one behind the blue wiggle, that's where we feel, that's where all the information comes in that, you know, if you poke yourself, which part of the skin did you poke yourself on? Is it touch? Is it pain? All of that stuff gets reflected here as an initial impulse and then put further to the back of the brain for interpretation. What does that mean? Is it a slap or is it somebody's trying to be gentle with me? You know, kind of stuff. Um, and that's known as the post central gyrus because it's behind the central sulcus. So the word central refers to the sulcus. Um, and I always remember what's the difference between pre and post. Pre is before, post is above, because the postman can only deliver a letter once it's, till, once it's given into the post office. Although that's really a weird way of looking at it, but that's how I remembered it early on. All right, so that's that. And then we have this egg shape number three. What's that? Thalamus. Thalamus. Super. Thalamus, we've done that a couple. And then we went down here again to this green, oh, what's that? Olives. The olives, because it's olive green. So this is one actually I put in the test because it's an easy one because the color matches up the structure. Um, again, a little bit more from the classroom time. Now, what's this pink thing called? That's number five. Pituitary. Pituitary, Pituitary gland. gland. Pituitary gland, good. I want to make sure you, so in the real brain, you'll never find a pituitary gland like that. Because in the real brain, the pituitary gland sits in the cell of Tursica, like that skull part, that's really the indentation, we learn about that. And it has a membrane on top of it, you hold it very firm there. And the reason for that is, is glandular tissue grows very fast. It's epithelial tissue. And brain tissue, neural tissue, does practically not grow and is very, very soft. And so if we let a, a, a gland here go crazy and grow and overgrow, it will push into the brain. And actually what it does, it blocks the optic chiasm. And we learned that in seeing how the eyeballs delivers the message from seeing into the back part of the brain. There is a slide on that. Uh, and that gets squeezed. And so what actually happens with people that have that squeeze, they, they don't see all of the visual field. They see only partial of the visual field. And so on the real brain, when you take a real brain out of the skull, that thing falls off. It breaks off because you can't undo that membrane. So, but in a plastic brain, we keep it on there because it's a very important structure. Anyway, that's for that. That was way too much talking on that front. What's this one? Number six. Is it lateral? Lateral ventricle. Correct. And again, remember, you pick it out of 
lateral ventricle, third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct, fourth ventricle. You don't have to write it down. You pick it out of a um, you pick it out of a list. Then we get to the eyeball. Come on. What's this called? Number seven. Lacrimal gland. The lacrimal gland, yes. The lacrimal gland makes the tears, the tears go across the eyeball, and then you have to get the sniffles after that, which when you get something in your eye and you want to flush it out, make sure you, if you do that, you rub your eye towards the inside because you help the flow. Don't go the other way because you harm, hinder the flow, you know, some sand cone or something like that. That was always a, sort of an interesting help with that. And then we go to the lungs. And we have this structure here, this long tube. What's that called? Trachea. Trachea, good. That was number eight. And then number nine, we get to the... Ascend, ascending colon. colon. Good, ascending colon. Excellent. And number last, what are these called? That I didn't know, I'm gonna be honest. Glomerulus, yeah. women's capsule? Glomerulus or renal, um, uh, the capsule. Um, in the test, it only gives you the one of them, which is the glomerulus, all right? which is sort of the common sense. Yeah, you can't read it here because it's actually written down there. So number 10 is the glomerulus. Let me look up, I always forget that. Others, what it's called, what else is called? I always forget it. So Bowman's capsule, that's what, that's what you said, right, Catherine? That was me. Was yeah, Bowman's. I, I said the, the glomerulus. Yeah, glomerulus or Bowman's capsule. Um, technically speaking, the glomerulus is this tuft of capillaries in here, and the Bowman's capsule is around it. But the textbooks call, at the end of the day, they call the whole thing, when you see it as a whole structure, they call it the glomerulus. And when, then when they go to the inside and they dissect it, then they call that the Bowman's capsule, and then this is the technical glomerulus. So um, it's, this is a little bit where anatomy to me gets frustrating because it's like, how is it, a, is it an AKA and also known as, or is it a different thing? That's always what made me unhappy in anatomy. And so that's partially why I try to give you uh, as many and also known as, so we eliminate that as much as possible because that's not necessary to have um, confusions around that. And this one with the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus is one of those places where I'm not, I don't think anatomy is quite that clean, the way it, it ter ter the terminology. Anyway, that's all, all I, I can say to that, unfortunately. All right, any questions to this, um, this stuff? Does that make you feel better or worse, what we just did? I feel better. Okay. I have a question. Yes, please. For the coloring label assignment for the kidney, um, did you have to draw the collecting duct? Because I didn't oh, find okay. it. And your last picture just made me think of that. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me go into that. I saw I saw that on the paddle and I didn't go into it to look at it. Because it could be that. Because I took all of these away. Oh where is it? I took all of these ultimately, you know, from Google searches, and then I changed them a little bit. So, couple might not be fully accurate there. Let's see. Wait, where? How do I get to the picture? God, I don't even remember how I did this whole thing. There we go. Let me share this with you. There we go. Oh, I see. Well, actually, you know what? This is the collecting duct. You got the glomerulus. You got the convoluted tubules. You got the... Oh, oh here's the glomerulus. Sorry about that. You got the convoluted tubules. You got the loop of Hanley. Got the distal convoluted tube, And then that's the collecting duct. This big thing. That brings in things from the other side. You see that? I do now. I was looking at the the other picture. Oh yeah, let me look at the other picture too. 
Yeah, you know, that would be just so helpful if they put the line down here. Maybe I got to figure out how to do that. Yeah, I would, maybe I need to talk to Zonyu now. Maybe he can help me create some of these picture things um, since he's so good with drawings. So that would be here. Yeah, you're correct. That's not indicated here. So it would be good to, if you want to understand it better, you can draw it in here and then, you know, you get to the calyces and then the renal pelvis and then down the ureter into the bladder. That's the next thing. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll work on improving on that a little bit. Give me something to do over the summer. Um, any other thoughts, questions? No? Well, with that, we're good. We can let it go and um, have you go to work and check in with me if you, if you need anything. All right. Will do, will do, sir. Thank okay. you so much for everything. And Enjoy it. Thank you, guys. I'm really proud of you, and I'm so glad to have you in the class. It's wonderful. Take Thank you, care. Sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Do you have any questions at the end? Just hang around.